It would last less than a year, but it was a period of intoxicating drama and momentous goal scoring. When Ronaldo signed for Barcelona, it was a move that elevated him into football's stratosphere and produced highlight reel moments which decades later are still in heavy rotation. And yet, it ended as quickly as it began. This is the story of Ofeno Ameno's season at Camp Nou. In the summer of 1996, Barcelona found themselves in transition. Johan Cruyff had been sacked before the end of the previous season, and iconic strike duo Romario and Christo Stoichkov had both departed. Stoichkov would actually return. He'd be re-signed for 1996-97, after a year in Serie A. But Romario was gone for good, and Barcelona needed a replacement. To find one, they went back to Eindhoven. Romario had made his name in Europe with PSV and had even been coached by Robson in the Eredivisie. His successor, both at the Philips Arena and in the Brazilian national team, was Ronaldo, who had followed the same route. He was different to Romario. 54 goals in 57 PSV games described his finishing ability accurately enough, but he was a mix of power, pace and skill, and even at 19 looked very much like a footballer from the future. Ronaldo might never have made it to Barcelona. Joan Gaspard, Barcelona's vice president, had had to disguise himself as a waiter to complete the signing. After an agreement between Barcelona and PSV was reached, all that was left was for Ronaldo to sign his contract. Only the Dutch club got cold feet at the last minute. With the forward away on international duty, preparing for the 96 Olympic Games, PSV asked the Brazilian FA to block any outside contact with Ronaldo. But Gaspar improvised. I met a Spanish waiter in the hotel and he lent me his work clothes, gave me a tray and a Coca-Cola, he told Gold.com in 2018. I put on the disguise, said hello to the security guards and told them a guest had asked for a soft drink. So Ronaldo signed the contract and for £13.2 million became the most expensive footballer in history. On the pitch, he was as advertised. His first goal for the club came against Atletico Madrid five minutes into his debut in the first leg of the Spanish Super Cup. With a quick shimmy to beat one defender, a surge of speed to break away from a second, and a precise, powerful strike that knifed into the corner of the net, Ronaldo had arrived. He'd score his first in La Liga during the third game of the season, dropping another shoulder against Real Santander and leaving another trail of defenders in his wake and another goalkeeper flat on his back. Now, there can really be no overstating just how dramatic Ronaldo's introduction to Spanish football was. In an era before Lionel Messi had normalised goal scoring in ridiculous volume, Ronaldo netted 16 times in all competitions before the end of October. He was also playing with a range of abilities which had rarely been seen in combination. He seemed too quick for someone of his build and too skillful for a player so strong. He was an athletic and footballing marvel and no sequence captured that superiority in sharper definition than his goal against Compostela. It's THE Ronaldo goal, and it's still played on social media thousands of times each week. He fights for the ball on the halfway line before making off with it towards the goal. Defenders literally hang off him, doing whatever they can to foul and stop the game. And yet he keeps running, beating players several times over before cutting across the box, leaving one more defender left for dead and finishing past a helpless goalkeeper. On television, Bobby Robson was caught celebrating in near wonderment. Rightly, because it was an extraordinary goal that announced that Ronaldo was already a force in the game. Ironically, at times, a man among children at just 20 years old. 47 goals in 49 appearances was a startling return. Romario's best tally had been 32 in his single full season. Stoichkov never managed more than 24. The sky was clearly the limit for Ronaldo and Barcelona. Well, except that it wasn't. The club was not a happy place in 1996. The sacking of Cruyff provoked significant support to protest against club president Josep Nunez. In addition to which, gentleman though Bobby Robson was, his tactical approach was more British in style and at odds with the blueprint that Cruyff had left behind. Robson was treated as a caretaker by the media, and chatter about potential successors was ceaseless. The reaction to his football was, at times, unenthusiastic. 
Ronaldo's year in Barcelona was also not unequivocally positive. He was injured on international duty as autumn turned to winter and that prompted complaints about his conditioning. A young Jose Mourinho, working as Robson's translator and assistant, was also less than complimentary about his work rate. And while Ronaldo's goal scoring was phenomenal, he suffered a long, goalless spell between November and January and a bleak February, which returned just two goals in six games. Now, if there was a souring of relations, Ronaldo certainly contributed to it. Being pictured at the Rio Carnival immediately after a 2-0 derby defeat to Espanyol was hopelessly naive and led to him being pilloried by the sports dailies. Added to which, rumours about a transfer to Serie A, still the dominant financial league of the era, began early in the season, never really stopped and were hardly discouraged by his representatives. The fans could be forgiven for suspecting that he was just passing through and ultimately they were right. Beyond the array of goals, long-range screamers, tap-ins, towering headers, brilliant dribbles and even penalty rebounds, there was also a hat-trick in a ridiculous 5-4 Copa del Rey comeback against Atletico Madrid and a further two goals in the semi-finals of a competition that they and he would ultimately win. And he'd scored the only goal in the Clasico at Camp Nou, as well as a last gasp brilliant winner against Deportivo La Coruña, which just about kept Barcelona's flagging title hopes alive. Real Madrid would win the title, and that was certainly part of the grumbling in the background. But Ronaldo did convert the penalty that won Barcelona the 97 Cup Winners' Cup in their final against Paris Saint-Germain, having been fundamental to their progressing through a semi-final against Fiorentina. And then he was gone. In a foreshadowing of what would happen two decades later, the most talented Brazilian player of his generation had his release clause activated and for a new world record transfer of £19.5 million, Ronaldo was heading for Inter and a second consecutive FIFA World Player of the Year award. Injuries were around the corner, the severity of which would change the dimensions of Ronaldo's career. And that's partly why that one season in Barcelona retains its mystique. For all its melodrama, it captured the original Ronaldo the best version. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalised experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions and podcasts. Not to mention, it's all ad-free. And you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.